I didn't run this channel, I'd never have bought the 24 inch M1 iMac. As it turns out, that would have been a massive mistake. Hello and welcome back to Marketless Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have and if you haven't subscribed the button is just below. So the 24 inch M1 iMac, I very nearly didn't buy it as I said in the intro and that was mainly because I thought the screen was too small, I was waiting for the big one, you know this, this rumoured massive iMac that's supposed to be coming out and as much as I loved the look of this new iMac I just didn't think I'd buy it. But then I thought, hang on a minute, you run a YouTube channel, you need to buy one, you need to review it, so I got one in. And if you're hanging around for that big iMac to be released and wondering whenever it's gonna happen, you may still have your one of your eyes on that 24 inch iMac thinking, should I just get that one? Is it worth the money? Will I regret the screen size? Is it powerful enough? Do the white bezels matter? Well, I've spent three months with this computer now and I think I can answer pretty much all of those questions. So I recently provided a bit of an insight slash list of excuses as to why I have three Macs. I have the M1 Mac Mini behind me, an M1 MacBook Air and an M1 24 inch iMac. Now out of all three of those computers, I'm fairly sure that the 24 inch iMac gets used the most. And the reason for that is pretty simple. It sits on this desk, which is my main desk, so it's my main computer for the business. There's only two reasons I don't use the iMac, which is if I'm doing video editing, which happens on the iMac behind me, and if obviously I'm out at a coffee shop or working downstairs, because I'm not one of those people who takes iMacs to coffee shops. I have seen someone do that. So for me, the iMac does normal work stuff, which is Teams calls, email, working in web applications like Notion, writing in a program called Ulysses, messing around with spreadsheets, sheets occasionally. It's just the normal kind of work stuff. So for me, it's my kind of business workhorse. And it's, I think it's important to kind of confirm that before I start reviewing it, because that does have an impact on how obviously how I use this machine, but also how I review it. There'll be no benchmarks. If you've just found this channel, I do not do benchmarks. There's lots of very smart people out there that do that sort of stuff. This is just a three month review based on using this 24 inch iMac as a general everyday computer. However, just like every Mac that I use in this studio, I do like to keep this Mac clean and I've had it for three months now so it's been used a lot and lots of things have been put onto it and taken off. I've been using a tool recently called Cleaner One Pro from Trend Micro and Trend Micro are very kindly sponsoring this video. Now Cleaner One Pro makes it really really easy just to get rid of all these unnecessary files that are on your computer. With a couple of clicks it just gives you a overview of what is taking up space on your Mac. Now obviously I've only been using this for three months so when I ran it it just found two gig of files. That doesn't sound like much but I've gone for the base spec version which I'll explain in a moment and two gig I could do with that two gig one feature that I love and I've not seen this before in any other kind of cleaner type program is the ability for cleaner one pro to sniff out duplicate photos now we all have these you take three or four photos of your kid or your dog or your house, whatever it might be, and you just forget about them. But they do clog up and take up space. It does tons more stuff. It's got this really cool disk map thing where you can look at certain folders and see exactly what's in those folders with a very simple diagram. There's a startup manager, app management, which is brilliant if you want to completely remove an app from your Mac. Macs don't make this very easy, but with Cleaner One Pro, click a couple of buttons, it's done. And it's also got this great little drop down at the top of the screen where you can see things like your CPU usage, your network usage, memory usage, and there's also a little button there to quickly scan for junk files. So it's just a very nice handy shortcut to Cleaner One Pro. I really recommend taking a look at Cleaner One Pro. To find out more, click the link in the description and thank you very, very much to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. Now the iMac that I went for is the base level version. I always do, well, I normally do this with most Macs these days because I want to get a base level expectation for you. And the base level M1 24 inch iMac comes with eight gig of RAM. It has the seven core GPU slash eight core CPU, and it has 256 gig of SSD storage. It's identical actually to, can't pick it up because it's plugged in, it's identical to my M1 MacBook Air in terms of the chip that's inside it. The only difference is with the iMac is the fact that it has a fan in there. And with the base level 24 inch iMac, you get one fan. If you go one step up, you get two fans. I have heard the fan come on a couple of times and it's only ever happened when I have been exporting a video call from Zoom. So Zoom seems to do some kind of encoding or something. And when, when that happens, when that kicks in, the fan spins up. That's it, I've never heard it before since then. It's no surprise really when you bear, if we go back to my use case for this computer, barely touching the surface of what the M1 is capable of. But that's great because it just never murmurs. It just runs and runs. You never feel like you're maxing out the, the memory, for example, even with loads and loads of apps open. And that's a key thing, if you're gonna be buying the 24 inch iMac and use it like I'm using it as a general office machine, you're never ever gonna make it sweat 
And that doesn't matter how many apps you have open, no matter what those apps are. If you're doing normal office stuff, it will just, you've got so much headroom there in terms of performance. It's a little bit like the iPhone and the iPad. I've talked about the iPhone recently. I've talked a lot about the iPad. They're almost too powerful for their own good, really, because you just, you can't maximize it. You can't really touch that performance unless you're a super power user. And if you're a super power user, you're not gonna get the 24 inch base level M1 iMac. You're probably gonna spec it up. Or if you're really, really, really intensive in terms of what you do, you're probably gonna wait for that big iMac anyway. In which case, you're probably not watching this video. If you're still watching this video, you're clearly interested in this version of the iMac. As I say, in terms of a general computer, it's just incredible. Even the port situation's okay. I've talked a lot about the lack of ports on the M1 Mac Mini. And the reason for that is that I plug lots of stuff in and out of that. That is my editing machine. So lots of cards get plugged in and out of it. It is a pain to only have a limited number of ports on there, but because with the iMac, I'm just using it for, com for computery office -y stuff, I don't really have to plug things in and out. So I do have a really nice hub actually, which I'll link to in the description. And because this just sits where it is and I don't plug things in and out of it really, I've got the hub set up just for additional ports if I need them. And that's it. The only thing I ever really plug into the back of this 24 inch iMac is the charger for the trackpad and the keyboard. So two USB-C ports for me is fine. If you want more, you just have to go to the next level up where you get four. The design. Now I have a bit of an issue in this studio, which will be fixed soon. Uh, some news on the way, hopefully. Um, but the, the biggest problem with the studio is that I can't see the back of my iMac. And the reason that's a problem is because it's absolutely gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, it's lovely from the front and I, I love what they've done with it actually. I even like the fact they've removed the Apple logo. The best part of this computer is the bit you can't see. But you, I think you really have to see these in person just to appreciate how lovely they are. And it's easily, what I think, one of Apple's best designs in recent memory. And I'm one of those people I never understood what this kind of drive they had for the iMac to get thinner. But actually, when you see what they've done with this, and it's got the kind of iPad Pro design aesthetic. So it's got these rounded corners and it's completely flat and it's very, very thin. I'm not convinced that makes any difference to where you can place it because it's horizontal. And you, you, unless you're wedging it down the side of something, but then where would you go? I, I don't buy the fact that it's easy to place in, in places, but it's there's something about this thin design that makes it look incredibly modern, premium, and just a lovely piece of kit to have on your desk. The bezels around the screen are now thinner as well. And yes, they are white, which is something which most people, again, if you're using it, this as a general office machine, you won't care about that. And actually it makes the screen feel bigger because those white bezels seem to disappear. But if you're a creative person and you use your Mac for video editing or photo editing or something like that, then the idea of having white bezels around the sides may put you off slightly. And the reason for that is it can be re very reflective. There doesn't seem to be any end to the screen. However, I have done some photo editing on this machine and it's great. I, I've not, th those white bezels don't really bother me. And yeah, there could be an issue there with, you know, getting the colors right, the color balance right on your images. If you're that worried about that, you won't be using an iMac. You've, you've probably got a reference monitor to, to use, but if you're just a general kind of photographer or whatever, and you know your eye, then, it doesn't make a big difference. I've, I've not worried about these white bezels at all. And the same goes for the chin. So there was when this, when this new design came out for the iMac, people had been fed all of these rumors about what looked to be a completely different design with with no chin. So the bit at the bottom wasn't there in these kind of fake rumored renders, and it looked a little bit like Apple's Pro XDR display. Now when this arrived and it didn't have that design, it, it still had this big thick chin at the bottom. Not as thick as the outgoing iMac, but still pretty pretty big and present. A lot of people scoffed at it and said, what, what have they done? Why have they kept that? Two reasons for it. The first one is that the computer is in there. So within that chin is the M1 chip and the logic board and all the bits and pieces that make the thing a computer. And the second reason is without the chin, it wouldn't look like an iMac. It would just look like a monitor. And Apple wants this to look like an iMac because when you walk into an office and you see one or you go around your mate's house and they've got one, you're gonna say, wow, what is that? That looks amazing. They're gonna say it's an iMac. You're gonna think, of course it is. It just continues that brand recognition for the iMac itself. In everyday use, you don't think about the chin. It's just there. Design is very, very subjective. And even if you don't like the look of this thing, I do think once you see it in person, you might change your mind. Go and take a look at one at an Apple store. If your mate's got one, go and have a look at theirs. It's just, I think, one of the most stunning designs Apple has come out with in the last 10 years.
The screen, there's not a huge amount to say about this, but that's not for any bad reason. And the reason I say that is that it is just a iMac screen. It's a Retina iMac screen, 4.5K, P3 color gamut, and it's just beautiful. Again, if you've never used an iMac screen before, then just go and check one out. They're just, you know, if you've got an iPhone, for instance, it's just like a big iPhone. It's as sharp as an iPhone. Colors are just very vivid and, and lovely, very bright. Don't think you can get a similar combo in terms of screen, performance, design for the price that you pay for the iMac. I think if you start adding all the individual bits together, so if, if for instance, you bought a, an M1 Mac Mini and uh, tried to find a monitor as nice as this 4.5K screen, and then put all the peripherals around that, you know, the webcam, the mouse keyboard, you're gonna spend either as much as an iMac or an awful lot more, and it still won't be a particularly attractive package. I just don't think iMac screens can be beat for what you're getting for the money. And as for the screen size, as I mentioned right at the start of this video, I was worried that it would be too small. I'm a big screen guy. I've got a huge 34 inch wide screen, ultra wide screen monitor behind me. I've got a, it's down here at the minute, but an older 27 inch iMac down here, big TV downstairs. I like big screens, but when I got this 24 inch iMac, it didn't feel small. I think that's the key thing. It wasn't even a case of having to adjust to it. It was just, oh, this is nice. It's not far off being, I think, the perfect size screen, again, for general office use. Don't think it's big enough for video editing, potentially, I think. Again, you'd want a bigger screen for that, but for everything else, it's it's great. And don't forget, it's bigger than the outgoing smaller iMac anyway, so you're getting a bit more screen estate. So if you're coming from the old, whatever it was, 21.5 inch, was it, um, iMac, if you're coming from that to this, you're getting a big upgrade anyway. But equally, if you're waiting for the 27 inch iMac successor, I don't think you'll be disappointed with this. Very quick note on the webcam, which is fantastic. And I know it's fantastic because I regularly get comments nearly every couple of days from people on Teams calls and Zoom calls saying, what webcam are you using? And if you look at yourself uh, along with everyone else on the screen, yours is clearly better if you're using a 24 inch iMac. So I think it's 1080p. They've done some of the clever stuff with the computational photography and all that gubbins inside. It's been a long time coming, but the iMac finally has a very, very good webcam. So you've got no worries there. So would I buy the 24 inch M1 iMac again? Yes, 100%. I think the fact, going right back to the start of this video, the fact that I wasn't gonna do it just because of the screen size was incredibly short-sighted on my part. And my advice with this, if you're waiting for that 27 inch replacement iMac, it will be a wonderful iMac, I'm sure. It will also be incredibly expensive. It may even be too big. <laughs> There's that to bear in mind as well. I, I know certain people on my Discord server have been waiting for this and I see comments in my YouTube videos and messages on Twitter and stuff like that. And people are waiting for this big thing to come along and we don't know when that's gonna happen. We don't know what problems it might have potentially. You know, early adopting isn't always the best thing with tech, particularly with Apple. Whereas with the 24 inch iMac, I know it's kind of early adopting as well because it's also brand new, but I've had literally, touch wood, no problems with it whatsoever. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to most people, I think, in terms for as of a general office computer give this a serious look if you've got an apple store near you go and have a look at one because you could be waiting for a long time for that big iMac and maybe save yourself some money the screen size is great it's really powerful mine's the base level but you can spec it up to the 16 gig of ram and get more ports and all the rest of it so you can get quite a nice computer out of this 24 inch iMac in fact i would go as far to say that this is apple's release of the year if you've still got some time and you fancy watching some more of my ramblings, then keep watching for a link to a video that I did recently about the iPhone 13 Pro and why I'm not very excited about it at all. But until next time, thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.